Right. Thanks, Thank you guys. All right, so we're going to talk about SOI today, and I'm excited to have uh, this big of a group. I don't know if I've had this many people in a class for a while. So well, we I'm talked excited. about it this morning and decided that it was a good class to come on. You did? Yes. Okay. Well, good. Yeah, everyone's been hyping your name up all day. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, stress, I love stress. it. No pressure. No pressure. Okay, good. I, hey, I'm ready for it. So uh, this class, though, this one in particular, I would recommend, and so I'm glad to see I've got a few people that are back for a refresher, but this one is one that I would recommend that you take it every time I teach it, which I tend to do about every 10-ish weeks. I would recommend come and do this class every time that I do it until you have it working for you. Because I'm going to give you, really, of all the classes that I teach, this one is the one that I will tell you, if you will follow and do, the, I'm going to give you four protocols. So I'm going to give you four things that you have to do with your SOI. And this particular class, if you will do it, it is 100% guaranteed to work. I have never had anybody who's actually done the four pieces of it not have it actually work and work at a very high level. So which for me, that's why I say, Come back because here's what happens is you guys, what's going to happen today is you guys are going to leave here and you're going to be really excited because I'm going to show you and prove to you through math that it is 100% guaranteed to work. But what happens is you leave here after the excitement and then you forget what we've talked about and you stop doing the pieces that I'm going to share with you. And if you will do it, so if you'll do these four protocols, what's a protocol? So, uh, what prescribed system prescribed system okay good is what it a step or a step okay good standard like a... A, okay good so here's how i like to think of it the reason i use the word protocol is it's a required condition so think about a protocol as being it's a required condition meaning it will work this process will work if you'll do the protocols but if you don't it's not there's no guarantee okay so, so stick with this. And, and again, for me, I would recommend come back to this over and over again until you have it implemented and working in your business. Now, so we're going to go through and talk about SOI. But before we get to that, I want to hit on a couple of other things just real quick. So we're going to do um, two other areas besides SOI real quick. So I just want to start first with, with a client. Because I'll first want to, in order for us to get through and have all of this make sense for you, Think of it as technically in real estate, we're going to work with three groups of people. There's kind of a fourth, but the fourth group we don't work with. So really there's three. Okay. So we have three groups of, of people that we're going to work with. And the first one is our clients. Now, when you went to real estate school, they taught you what made somebody a client, which is great in terms of the legal standpoint of it. But what I want to talk about real quick is what makes somebody a client that means you're going to get paid from them. Okay. What's that? Okay, good. So, so there's four things for this as well. So the first thing, so Aaron said agency, I'm going to call it something a little bit different than that, which, but it agency is included in it and it's, they are committed to working exclusively with you. So the first thing that makes somebody a client is they are committed to working exclusively with you. Now, how do they demonstrate that they're committed to working exclusively with you? is they sign agency right so they sign agency and that that shows that's their demonstration of being committed to working exclusively with you the other thing that's going to make somebody a client is they have to have well i'm going to just write it down as number two here and i'm going to write it down as need but let me tell you how if you're taking notes this is how i would write it down they have clear and present needs that can be met so in order for somebody to be your client they have to have clear and present needs that can be met. Sean, there he is. <laughs> he asked if you were going to come and heckle me. And I said, I don't know. Oh, but... <laughs> so they have clear and present needs that can be met. So clear and present needs that can be met, meaning it's realistic. They understand what it is that they want. And you're going to be able to go out and find it. Okay, so that's number two. Number three on this is that well any thoughts that you guys have on what else would a client have to have be or do for you really to know you're going to get paid from them? money 
Okay, so uh, money, I'm going to throw in under the clear and present needs that can be met. That would be part of the can be met part is that they have the money or can qualify. Okay, let me give it to you then. They're ready to buy or sell, depending on if it's a buyer or seller, they're ready to buy or sell now. Define it now. Next seven days. Okay, so I heard three months and seven days. Any other thoughts, Chad? I, I just have a thought is... Um, they're ready to shoot. They're like they're ready to shoot when they see something. So it's not like perfect, a, like a day. Yes, but that's exactly right. pre-qualified. They they have like a letter ready to go. We see where they're already packed their gun. They're aiming and they're fired. Perfect. Go. That's exactly right. Into, like, the buying window. So if you tie it back to this, they have clear and present needs that can be met. So they like you said, they know exactly what they want. They're qualified. They're ready to go. As soon as we find the property, if it's a buyer, then they'll pull the trigger, write the offer. If it's a seller, as soon as they, they can see that, okay, yes, um, we've gotten an offer that meets our needs, they'll accept it. So now really is, there's no set time for now, but it's when we come across their clear and present need that can be met, they'll pull the trigger. So good. And then number four, this one's more about the management. Now, if I had started this and said, everybody should raise your hand and tell me, how, show me on like fingers, how many clients you have right now, right? This one is where you would, a bunch of you would lose your clients. Meaning like if we had, if we had to define it as they have to meet all this criteria. Okay. And, and the last one is they have to be tethered. What? Otherwise they're considered a, 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 just a, a lead. That's right. Yep. Which is what we're going to talk about here. So they have to be tethered. What does tethered mean? Yeah, buyer broker agreement. No. Okay. So it, buyer broker is up here is under this, the, they're committed to working exclusively with you. So it's not, we don't tether them that way. How else would we tether them to us? Well, just think of the word tether. What does tether mean? Tied to. Okay, good. So how would we tie our clients to us if it's not with a buyer broker or a listing agreement? Report. Report? report? Yeah. Okay. Actually, how we're going to do it is through an appointment. So think of it this way. Here's how I want you to think about it. Let me, in fact, actually, let me ask it this way. Have any of you ever had someone that you had that you thought they were committed to working exclusively with you, meaning they had signed agency, they had clear and present needs that could be met, they were ready to go now, but they ended up using someone else. Yeah. My guess would be, and not always, but a lot of times it is because we don't tether them to us. Now, so here's what I mean by that. The way you have your clients tethered to you is it, the way I'm defining this, and again, the state of Utah wouldn't agree with what I'm saying, but the way you tether them to you to know you're going to get paid is do not ever leave an appointment with a client without scheduling the next appointment. If you will always have an appointment scheduled with your clients, you're not going to lose the clients. At least it shouldn't as easily. Like it's very unlikely they're going to go use somebody else if you constantly have that next appointment scheduled with them. Okay. Yeah, if they have a desire to look and you haven't scheduled it and they're looking. They might find themselves at the house. That's right. They'll go do they'll go without you. Perfect. Okay, so that's what makes somebody a client. So the management of the client is more about through appointments. Next, we're going to talk about is prospects. A prospect, think of it this way. When we talk about prospecting, what we're talking about is we're trying to get clients, right? Is that's the purpose of prospecting. So when you prospect. What we are doing is we're trying to find people who are going to meet this four criteria. And usually we start our prospecting with setting the appointment. That's usually the first thing that we are doing in our prospecting is trying to set an appointment. Well, think of it this way. A prospect is someone who is deficient in one or more of these. So remember I said, if I had asked you at the start to hold up on your hands, how many clients you have right now. And then as I took them through, took you through all four of these, how some of them would drop off. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, those people are not clients, they're prospects. 
So a prospect is deficient in one or more of these, meaning they're missing at least one of these. So the idea of a prospect is you're trying to get them to become this. So what should I do then? So let's say that I have somebody, so using my definition here of a client, you have somebody who's committed to working exclusively with you. They have clear and present needs that can be met. They're ready to go now, but you don't have an appointment. Well, therefore, in my book, they're a prospect, they're not a client. Therefore, how would I manage this person? What should I do with them until I get an appointment with them? How would I manage them? Call them daily. Follow okay, good. So contact, and Aaron said daily. I'm going to say minimum, the minimum. So I'm good with daily if you want to call them daily. But minimum, you should never go more than how often? That's right. No more, no less than once per week until they become a client. Now, let me ask you this question. Is everybody that we're talking about here as prospects or thinking of it as your lead follow-up, is, are all of them gonna become a client? No. No. And so because of that, because, and it could be for various reasons that they're not gonna become a client, but they're not all gonna become a client. Therefore, what's gonna happen is at some point as we're calling them, at, at least weekly, we're eventually going to either drop them, just get rid of them altogether, or we're going to move them over to this column here, which is what we're going to spend the rest of the, our, our time talking about, which I a lot of times like to call these people suspects. They're sus, right? <laughs> but SOI, okay? So we're going to talk about them in terms of being our SOI. So the rest of the class, I'm going to talk about now the four protocols. Remember, we started this thing talking about, I'm going to give you four protocols. Now, so we're going to go through four protocols that I'm going to give to you that's going to help you to accomplish a huge amount of business from working your sphere of influence. Now, that's going to look something like this. So let me show you what this process looks like. Anybody know how bamboo grows? Fast. Okay, right, that's usually the answer that I get is that it grows really fast, but, but, but really it's actually very slow at first. Now, if this were, what I've drawn up here is the learning curve, okay? So this is half of a bell curve, but this is what the learning curve looks like. Now, I started this thing by giving you guys a guarantee that if you will follow what I'm going to show to you, you will generate minimum 30 transactions a year. So if you're not doing at least 30 transactions a year, I would say it is because you're not following the four protocols that we're gonna talk about today. And, and I'm giving you the guarantee today. In fact, well, let me say this first, then I'll come back to that. So what this is gonna look like. So I'm, I'm giving you a guarantee if you will follow this process, these four protocols, you're going to do minimum 30 transactions a year. But let me say it this, it's, it, that point is gonna be right here. So meaning it's gonna take a little bit of time. The reason I asked about the bamboo is I'll come back to that in a second, but it, it's going to happen very fast for you, but it's gonna take some time, just like bamboo has to get the root system in place before it takes off. Now, thankfully, this is not going to take four years like it does the bamboo before it grows. But we are talking it might take four or five months before this rapid acceleration takes off with it. So here's what I'm saying. Six to nine months from today, if you will do what, we, what I'm going to talk about, you will be consistently doing transactions that will lead to over a six digit income. And, and I'm, I'm going to actually do the math with you. And I'll go, I'm going to show you guys how this works to where you're going to see it's actually probably going to be more like 250. But I'm just saying a minimum of a six digit income if you will follow and do these protocols. Now, the reason why I can guarantee that to you is because it's a math problem and it, and it works as math. Meaning, here's the problem. The way that most people approach working their sphere of influence is most people approach working their sphere of influence as a people problem, not as a math problem. Now, 
What I mean by that is we go out and we try to look for and get tons and tons of people into our sphere of influence. And in fact, I remember being down in Vegas at a uh, seminar that uh, Mike Ferry did. And I remember he had up on the, on the panel all these top producing agents. And he was going around asking them, how many people do you have in your SOI? How many people do you have in your SOI? And I don't think any of the people on the panel had less than 2,000 people in their database. Now, but hold on for a second, because here's where I want to go with this. I remember he also said, you should be able to get a 10 to a 15% return off of your um, sphere of influence. Well, if you had 2,000 people in a database and you were going to get a 10% return off of that, how many transactions should they be doing? 200. And they weren't doing 200 transactions. So part of what I'm saying is, here's the thing. Most of the way that we've all been trained to work our sphere of influence has been trained to go get as many people as you can into this database. And I'm going to give you a little bit different approach to it, but you got to stick with me so I can show you the math problem with it. Now, what that's going to look like, though, for, so let me just back up for a second on this. Most of the time, the people who come to this class get it. Remember, I said, you're going to leave here excited of like, I can see that this will work. And I, you're going to totally have a clear vision of how it's going to work. Yet, and I'm not trying to be negative, almost every one of you is going to leave and not do the four protocols. And they're not difficult. They're not difficult to do. But most of you are going to leave here and not do it. And I'm to some extent saying that to you a little bit of like I'm throwing down the gauntlet to, I want I want to challenge you to have you be like oh I'm leaving and I'm gonna do it I'm like because for me when I learned this what happened actually was a guy had come to, the, to our office a sales meeting in our office and he said I'm gonna give you the best idea ever and none of you are gonna go do it well for me I was like well then I'm doing it if that's what usually happens I'm gonna do it so I'm trying to instill that into you a little bit but here's why the thing is you're going to leave here with it crystal clear but most of you are not going to do it and the reason you're not going to do it is you're, look at what if, if this is your income that's going to come as a result of doing what i'm talking about notice what happens the first three to five months depending on when i say six to nine here but what's going to happen the first three to five months It'll be flat or just a bit. essentially nothing now, remember, that's why I like bringing up the bamboo is if you planted a bamboo seed and then you left and you kept nurturing it and watching it for at four years, you're like, I don't think anything's happening. That's what this is going to feel like to you for the first few. The good news, it's only three or four or five months. So I'm just asking you stick with it for the three to five months and then see what happens because it will take off. It will take off. It has to because it's a math problem. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. But notice, though, but most people will leave this excited and not go do it because you'll start to do it and you won't see results the first month. Now, you, actually, you guys, any of you that are in here that are seasoned agents actually probably will see it happen faster, which is why I usually say the six to nine months. But if you're brand new, if you're Abe, Abe's probably the newest in here i'm guessing as i look around if you're him like it might be nine months maybe but but that's when it hits this point i'm not saying you won't do transactions along the way i'm just saying it will be something you can count on and guarantee to work now so with that i've got a video i want to show you real quick that uh is i know some of you when i say it's a math problem you panic a little bit you don't like math. That's okay. See, it's a numbers problem. That, that's probably what I should do. Huh? Say it that way. It's a numbers problem. All right. Well, let me get this all hooked up here. I'm going to show you this video real quick. And then I'm going to show you, we'll get into the math of how all this works. Shut off the lights so you can see here. Now, so this video for for the younger generation here is Mom Pa Kettle. You ever heard of Mom Pa Kettle? Eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think so. Okay, so before TV was in color, when it was in black and white, 
like this was some of the first sitcoms that, that came on TV. So um, this is Mom Pa Kettle. Mom Pa Kettle. They weren't the brightest people. So we're, we're going to watch a video from Mom Pa Kettle here for a second. I figure 75% to you, Pawn Ma, and 25% divided between the five of us. Yida, Crowbar, myself, Tom, and the baby. That makes 5% for each one of us. Ah, uh, 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 Billy, you're cheating yourself. If there's 25% divided among the five of you, that's 14% apiece. <laughs> oh, no, listen, Pa. I, I wouldn't cheat you. You know I wouldn't. Now, look. Look here. I'll show you. Let me rub this out here. And now, 25 divided by 5 is 5. You see, you, 5 won't go into 2, will it? No. But 5 goes into 25 five times, you see? No, you're wrong, Billy. Now, now I'm a pretty good mathematician. Now, 5 into 25... Five won't go into two, will it? No. But five goes into five once. Now, we didn't use the two before, so we bring it down here. Now, five into 20 goes four times. <laughs> there you are. Five into 25, 14. No, look, Pa. Now, let me prove it to you now by multiplication. Uh, five times five. Five times five is 25. Billy, I'm surprised you're learning. Huh? I'm surprised that you're learning. Now I'll show you. <laughs> five times 14 is 25. Five times 4 is 20. Five times 1 is 5. 25. That's it. No, no. Look, Ma. You, you, look, you, you're wrong there because... You, you, I'll, I'll, pro I'll prove it to you. I'll, we'll put down four, five 14s here. 14, 14, 14. There. Now... Now, I'll prove to you by addition that, that 5 14s is not 25. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 21, Wait. 22, 23, 24, 25. There you are. Better brush up, Billy. I don't want to see you boys cheated. <laughs> All right. Before we go any further, what kind of math are we going to show? <laughs> well, it's going to feel like I'm showing you this. But the, that's the whole reason for me showing the that video is it's going to feel like that's what I'm going to do. But it's not. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to take you through the math on this. But at at one point, it might feel like I'm doing math like that, but it, but I'm, I'm really not. The funny thing is, is like, after a while, you're like, maybe, like, especially if you have kids who've done Common Core, it's like, that kind of feels like how they're teaching them to do math today. So, okay. Now, so the next piece of this, here's what this looks like. So I want to show you what the problem is, because here's the thing. Now, I mentioned before I showed the video that one of the things that, that, we've been trained is you should get a 10 to 15% return off of your uh, work in your sphere of influence. I, if you'll do it the way I'm going to show you these, these um, four protocols, I almost said six, I almost created two more, but these four protocols that I'm going to give to you, you can get actually a 60% return off of working your sphere of influence. And in fact, that should be the minimum that you should get off of working your sphere of influence. Are you looking to see if everybody? I was just making sure everyone was paying attention. <laughs> I was like, Stephanie's like, you guys believe in this? <laughs> I'm a, no, I was waiting for everyone to do the math. Oh, no, okay. Life, life, yeah, life. that's okay, good. What? So here's why. So let me show you what happened. So I'm going to kind of just, we're, gonna, we're now going to talk about uh, uh, some statistics stuff for a minute. But again, don't panic. It's simple. It's easy. And I'm going to walk you through. But if, if I were to go out and just work in the general public, meaning if I just said, I'm going to go knock on doors and I just went and picked a neighborhood, what are the odds that I'm going to run into somebody that needs to buy or sell a home? Any idea of what are the chances if I go just knock on a door, I just go pick a neighborhood out in Salt Lake here and I go knock on doors, what are the chances I'm going to come across somebody that wants to buy or sell? It's like one, 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 no. one hundred percent chance they're going to meet someone. Well, I'm going to meet somebody, but that wants to buy or sell. 
Right. There's actually not even a hundred percent chance you're going to meet someone if you go knock on doors today, right? That's actually true. I'm just teasing. With COVID, they're all home, so it's good. <laughs> so, but any ideas like what? How often does do people sell their house? On average, every seven years. Seven years. Yeah, somewhere around seven years. So if I go out and knock on doors, here's what it would be. Now, again, we would have to have a large enough sampling size. So if I, when I said just went and picked a neighborhood, might not play out exactly the what what I'm going to say next. But if we took like all of Salt Lake County and threw it on a map and said, okay, what are the chances that people are going to move? It's going to look something like this. Like seven out of every 93, or out of every 100, so, so, so the statistics is 93 to seven, that, that, that you're going to come across somebody that's going to be buying or selling within the next year. So I'm not saying like today, but within the next year. Now, where that came from is this. According to the Census Bureau, the population moves 12% of the population is at any given moment is in the process of moving. But that includes renters, okay? So if you factor out the renters, according to the census, basically 7% of the population is in the process of moving at any given moment, okay? Now, so what that means is if I just go out and knock on doors, now, remember, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion about statistics for a second here, okay? Because the way you and I hear what I just said, the way you heard what I just said, actually feels pretty good. Meaning, because here, who, by a show of hands, after I say this, tell me if you've heard this before. If you talk to 100 people, you should get how many leads? Usually the number you hear is 10, and from those 10 leads should turn into how many transactions? You guys have not, not I, I'm surprised more people haven't heard this. Usually for, for me, at least early on when I got my license, what the way my manager was always talking about, if you go talk to 100 people, you should get 10 leads, and that should turn into one transaction for those 10 leads. Well, where that came from is this, this 7%, they just rounded it to make it sound better. 110 one sounds better than 107 one. So they just said 110 one. Now, watch, watch this though, because that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? If you went and talked to 100 people, you should get 10 leads and it should turn into one transaction over the next year. <coughs> doesn't that sound pretty good? No. <laughs> I, I saw a bunch of heads shake yes, but wanted to say sounds no. Reliable. Sounds doable. It's, okay, sounds doable. Here's the problem with it though. So let me, so we're going to talk about this for a minute, and then I'm going to show you how we get to 60% out of our database versus working this, okay? Now, here's the problem with it. This sounds pretty good, but let me show you what it really says. Watch this. So, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if I um, go out knocking on doors, I knock on, hi, my name's Russ, I'm with Century 21. And he tells me no. Okay. Hi, I'm Russ. I'm a Century 21. Do you know anybody wanting to buy or sell? No. Know anybody want to buy or sell? Yes. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, anybody? no, 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 no. So I've been told nine times now. According to this, what should happen when I get to Mike? Yes. 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 But is that what happens? No. no it's like the 103rd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, but here's why. Now watch this, because the problem is this sounds pretty good, but let me show you what it actually really is, do, is saying, is this. If I go to Abe and I ask him if he knows anybody thinking about buying or selling or if he wants to buy or sell, and he says no. So what were the odds when I go to talk to him? Yeah, so essentially it was nine to one, right? But, but this is where we get confused because what we think happens is when I go to the next door and I knock on it, now what are the odds? Same. See, we, we think it's going to be eight to one, and then it should be seven to one, six to one, five to one, four, but that's not the way it actually works. That's Instead, make a lot of money. what? That's why casinos make a lot of money. That is exact, that's exactly right. It's because they understand what we're talking about. So if I go to him, what the odds are nine to one. Now what are they? Now what? 
No, no, I'm just saying, according to this, that sounds really good, because here's the problem. I've watched agents go out and door knock 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 and they never get anything. And here's why. It's because the odds that I'm going to get a deal are nine to one against me. Now, I'm not trying to convince you guys not to door knock. Please don't hear that because I'm not trying to say that. I'm just going to show you a process you want to use with it. I'm going to show you how to use door knocking along with your suspects or your SOI to make it work. Okay. So because the odds are nine to one. Then they go to here, they're still nine to one. They're still, it doesn't matter how many doors I knock on, the odds are always nine to one against me. Now, the good news is, and which what, what Michael Brand brought up is Vegas understands this. See, every one of the games you go play in Vegas is the odds are in their favor. So the only thing that hurts them is what? No, no, they don't care about that. The one odd. It's it's if nobody shows up. Oh, yeah. If as long as there are people putting money on a table or in a machine, they win mm -hmm. because they understand the odds yeah. and how the odds are in their favor. So actually, they like it when you win because it gets wins. what they celebrate the win. They point it out. Look, a winner. And, and why? Look what You're, you can do. Yeah. Out. Anyone can do it. Yeah. That's right because then that keeps because see all the odds are set up in Vegas's favor to where they just know. However much money is going in, they're getting a percentage of it every single time, even regardless of paying it out. It's just they understand the odds. See, and what I want to do is help you guys understand the odds. In fact, um, Sam Bell, as part of his um, in school, he had to do some research. I don't know what it was, something with him becoming an attorney. And he had to do this research about gambling and the machines like, um, I don't know if I can remember, like Family Feud, the, those slot machines, mm -hmm. those ones are actually even tied to, this is way off topic, but those ones are tied together for the whole state of Nevada. So if somebody in Vegas hits on one of those machines, the chances of you hitting on it in Wendover go down because of the person in, those ones are all connected together. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll have to have him tell that story sometime. It's kind of interesting, but, but okay, back to this though. See, so the challenge with this, when you look at it as seven, really what this means is there's a 93% chance when you go out knocking on doors, you're going to get told no. Now, again, I'm not trying to stop you from door knocking. You want to do it. You want to just do it in conjunction with what we're going to talk about here. Because if you'll take the people that, were, that, that you don't set an appointment with, and in fact, this is a totally separate class, but let me say it real quick. When you prospect, you should always prospect on two parallel tracks. You're always looking for the now business. I want to find the people who are ready to buy and sell now, but who plans on still having their license a year from now or two years from now? If you came across somebody in door knocking that, that said, yeah, we're, we're thinking about selling, but our kid's a junior and so we're not going to sell until he graduates from high school. Would it make sense if there was a way to keep track of them with, the, with not a ton of effort to line, put that in the pipeline so that two years from now you got a trend? Because you're going to need it two years from now, right? So why not prospect on two parallel tracks? While you're out looking for the now business, when you come across some future business, take them and put them into your SOI. And I'm going to show you how to do this to where it's not going to be that much effort on your part. But when that person becomes ready, you'll be their agent. It just will happen. Okay, So that's where we're headed with this. Now, if you'll follow this and do it the way we're talking about, the way I'm going to show you, you can get a 60% return off of this group of people. Meaning that of the people in your SOI, you should be getting transactions, whether it's through a referral or them personally, either way. I mean, because do you care? If somebody in your SOI lists their house with you or refers somebody to you and you list their house, does it really matter? So that's what I'm saying. When I say 60% is of the people in your database, you should be able to get a return of 60%, meaning 60% of the people in there should either do a transaction with you or refer somebody to you over the year. And if they're not, then I'll show you what we're going to do with them to, to make it to where that will happen. Okay. All right. So 
Here's the first thing. So actually, let me do one other quick exercise. What we've talked about so far, which I should have grabbed this and done this sooner. So we'll, we'll do an abbreviated version. But rolling a dice, pick a number out of between one and six. Five. Okay, five. So I one day I said that, pick a number, and somebody said seven. And I'm like, well, okay, <laughs> that's not going to work. But what are the odds that I'm going to roll a five when I roll this? So one out of it. So, but similar to what we just said, if I just right now did it and I roll it six times, am I going to come up guaranteed with a five? So I've done it twice. Let's just see real quick. Three, four. No, this is only five. So now I have to get a five this time, right? Because of what you guys said. Well, not. So what's going on? Okay, so now notice though that I have had times where I've done this in a class where I've rolled it over 20 times and still not gotten whatever the number was that people said. Because the odds don't change based on the number of times that you do it. Now, there is one caveat to that, like if somebody's really into math, that's called regression towards the mean, but we're not going to get into that, but that, that would say, the more times I haven't rolled it, the, the more likely I will roll it. That's called regression towards the mean, but that's way too deep for where we want to go. Just know that it doesn't matter how many times I roll this, the odds don't change. It's still going to be one out of every six times. Now, what if though, what if we change the rules of the game? Okay. And I'm going to change the rules of this game. And let's see what happens now of how many times I have to roll it to get a five. So here's what the, the rules of the game are going to look like. I'm going to roll this. And if I get anything but a five, I'm going to put a sticker on it. And then if I roll it and the sticker shows up, I get a free throw. It doesn't count. Make sense? So let's see how many times I have to roll it now to get a five playing by. So here's the difference. Just rolling it like I did is what's called an open system. The way most agents approach working their database is in an open system. And in an open system, the odds do not change based on the number of times you do it. But in a closed system, so that's what we're doing now, is I'm switching the rolling of this dice from being an open system to a closed system. So that's actually protocol number one, is it has to be a uh, closed system. Working your sphere of influence has to be a closed system. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But that's the first protocol. So now watch what happens though. So I'm going to roll this and, and let's keep track of how many times I have to roll it to get a five. Okay. So there's a two. So I'm going to take now, actually I'll not do red, so it'll stand out a little bit. So I'm going to take a green sticker and I'm going to put it on this two. So if that shows up again, it, I get a free throw. That's the rule of the game. Doesn't count. We don't count it as a throw. I get to redo it again. Make sense? Okay. So let's see how many times I have to roll. So I've rolled it once. Okay, there's a one. So I'm gonna take another sticker, put it on. Free throw. So I've only rolled it twice still, right? Because that one didn't count. That doesn't count either. So I still only rolled it twice. Okay. So I rolled it three times to get a five. Now let's do it again and see how many times I have to roll. And this, I still get the free throw from the sticker. Okay? So that one's a four. So now I'm going to put another sticker on it. And I still get the free throw every time the sticker shows up. So free throw. Free throw. Six. Okay, so I rolled it how many times? Twice. Okay, yeah. good. So I've rolled it three times now, but all the things that everything's out. covered except for the five. So what's going to happen now? You you can do you I, I'm going to get a five or a free throw every time. Okay. This, this is what I call late day for me. <laughs> squats in. I get, yeah. Make good use of it. Get all my squats in. I know. Come on. 
See, this would have been the good one to show you the open system. Yeah. All right, but you get the point, right? I don't need to keep doing it, or do you want me to? Yeah. Okay, good. You get the point. <laughs> All right. So what? But then, okay. So then I would have rolled it what four times mm -hmm. to have gotten the the five. But then now, what's going to happen? You got to keep rolling. I only have to roll it one time. Either I get a free throw or I get a five. Doesn't count. So I'm, my odds now are what on this? One to one. Yeah, it's hundred percent because it's free throw or. How would you like to do real estate that way? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you how. So this is what it looks like. Now, the reason we can do it that way is because it's our game. See, you can't go to Vegas and do this, by the way. Don't try. What about the stickers? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, go to the craps table and be like, hey, this doesn't count if there's a I sticker on it. <laughs> I get a free throw. I'm going to take my money. There's a sticker. That's right. Stickers. There's a sticker. I get my money. Okay. So the first thing that has to happen then for working your sphere of influence, well, thanks for being here, guys. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing that has to happen in working your sphere of influence is you want it to be a closed system, which what that means is it needs to be fixed in size. See, the way that we are going to change this, the way most people approach it is they approach it as an open system, meaning I'm going to get as many people into my database as I can get. What I'm telling you is if you want to have this work and have it work really, really well, we want it to be a closed system. Closed system means fixed in size. So what size should it be? Okay, good. So here's what I will say is for the, for the sake of me training you, let me say it this way. The, the protocol is it has to be fixed in size. But what I have found is when you're first learning this and doing it, the number you want to use is 200 people. Now, you could, the truth is, it just has to be fixed in size. You can have it be whatever number you want it to be, okay? But you'll see why I recommend 200 here in a minute. What I have found actually is typically people with, if you have more than 300 you're gonna struggle and probably not actually gonna follow the other three protocols is what I found. So if you will start it with, so here's what I'm saying. Remember I said this, it's gonna take six to nine months before you can plan on over a six digit income. Once you hit this spot here, which I refer to this actually for years and years, actually, I think I can actually say this now. When I trained this up the street at Coldwell Banker, I always trained it as a jelly bean jar is like, and, and I'll explain more of that in a second, but I always did it as a jelly bean jar. But then um, when I left there, the guy that trained me and it had this exclusive thing with Coldwell Banker to where like, he said, you can't call it a jelly bean jar. You got to do something else. So I just didn't call it anything, but he's now severed his relationship with them. So I can now call it a jelly bean jar. So, okay. Why? What? Why? Why what? Yeah. Well, just the agreement was that I he had exclusive rights to training it at Coldwell. Oh, so his, so. The, okay. yeah. All these things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's so what a jerk. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing: is what I have found is if people tended to have more than 300 people, they just wouldn't do it. So that's so just know like the the true thing is it has to be fixed in size. But for the sake of while you're learning it, do it at 200. Once it's matured, and, and, and I always refer to that as a mature jelly bean jar, once your SOI is matured, which is this point right here, change it to any number you want it to be. However, it still has to stay fixed in size because that's what makes it a closed system. That's what makes the closed system work of being able to do the free throws, okay? And I'll explain more of that in a second. Now, um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. That's all right. We'll go to number two. Why 200? Oh, why 200? Because it's manageable. The, the, because, well, yeah, here, well, because as I give you protocols number two and, and three, well, more so three <coughs> than two, but as I give you the protocols, 
what you'll see, if you had 4,000 people in it, you wouldn't do the other pieces is, is really what it boils down to. So the reason I say 200 is I've just found that's manageable and it's a, that's enough people to ramp it up. Now, so in fact, do any of you guys, um, have any of you done a transaction or know Tonya Messina? Do you know Tonya? Yeah. yeah. So Tonya actually, her, her business of everybody that I have trained in this, Tonya is the one who does it better than anybody I've ever seen. Her business that she does, and I, I, should, I haven't looked up her business recently. I need to look it up. But her number that she uses here, now, I'm not giving you permission to start with this number because you, you still need to start with 200. But Tonya's number that she has in her database is 97 people. And from 97 people, this now this is going back about five years is the last time I checked, but five years ago, 97 people were generating for her over $300,000 a year in income with 97 people doing nothing but what we're talking about right here. Okay. How many do you have in your database? I don't really talk about it. Oh, okay. Too many because. Okay. I'm well, let me ask you this then. How many do you really talk to of the ones in your database? Do you know? All of them eventually. <laughs> no, she <laughs> might choose it. No, I know. I might be but in what time frame? When you, I'm just laughing because you said I eventually. Know, but. I know what you're saying is like how many how many months would it take to reach those? 200 within three months but some i talk to monthly sometimes it's yeah. a tech sometimes it's in which says same is going to be with this i'm right with you but how many transactions do you do because you're solely sol right that's yeah. all i do and how many transactions last year um 32 okay good so if you want brenda lee's life and you do <laughs> then follow this system right you what you don't you want don't it, want it today oh, okay all right, so, but here's the thing. So start with 200 people. And the reason we wanna have 200 because, so now let's go into protocol number two. Protocol number two is you have to have permission from all 200. You have to have permission from all 200 people. So let me show you what that looks like. If you are calling, so since I've been picking on Abe so far, we'll stick with it. If I'm Abe today and I'm brand new, I'm gonna pull out my cell phone and I'm going to start going through every contact that I have in my cell phone, and I'm going to call them up, and I want to ask for permission to put them into this. So here's what it would sound like. So let's, Abe, let's pretend you're in my database, okay, or my phone. So I call you up. Ring, ring. Hello. And hey, Abe, this is Russ. How's it going? Pretty good. How you doing? Good. So hey, just, just touching base with you. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but since we talked last, I've gotten my real estate license. Did you know I was working on that? Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that online. Yeah. You did see that on social media? Cool. Yeah. Well, so, hey, one of the things I've learned is the very best way for me to build my business is by referral. So I just wanted to check with you and see if you had a real estate need or you heard of somebody, who would you use? Uh, you. You'd use me? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, good. I'm putting together a select group of people that I'm just gonna stay in touch with to keep updated about real estate. I'd like to add you to that list, would that be okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so essentially that's what permission sounds like. So with people you know, call them up and just say, hey, it's 2022, I learned through COVID, I want my business to be primarily referral dependent. So I'm putting together, and so here's the key, I'm putting together a select group of people that I'm gonna stay in touch with. Keep them updated on real estate. Can I add you to that list? Now, what if they say no? Yeah, who cares? Like, wouldn't you rather know? Uh, here's, the, here's what I'll tell you that I learned. I would rather know from a neighbor or a friend, family member, that they're not going to use me for real estate before, they, before I drive by their house and there's some other agents for sale sign out. <laughs> like, I, wouldn't you rather know that beforehand? Because otherwise you're like, oh. And then here's the worst is when I then would call and talk to or I would see the people in the neighborhood and I'd be like, hey, so Chad, I noticed you ended up listing your house for sale. In fact, I'm thinking of one in particular that this guy um, was a friend. I coached baseball with him like we he and I coached our sons together one day at for sale signs in his front yard. So the next day at practice, I'm like, Tracy, hey, what what happened? Like, where are you going? And he's like. Oh, I think he worked for Wells Fargo or Brinks. I can't remember one of the armored car places. And he's like, I've got it tr gotten transferred to uh, Texas. And 
I said, well, why did you end up listing your house with, and it was somebody with Coldwell Banker. I was with Coldwell Banker at the time. And I, and it was somebody with Coldwell Banker. And I was like, why'd you list your home with her? And he said, oh, because of the relocation. And they just said we had to use their agent. And I was like, well, but you could have used me. And he's like, well, I didn't know. Like I just, so here's the point. Guaranteed every one of you has people in your cell phone right now that don't know that you want to help them either buy or sell. So like that was a huge learning lesson for me to where from that point on was like, I will contact my SOI because I was like, I'm not ever having that happen again. Because here, and here's the worst part about it. So the agent does an open house the first weekend she has it listed. And then two days later, the house two doors down from me. So Tracy's house was probably, I don't know, four or five houses straight ahead of me. And then in the cul-de-sac, two doors down from me, that agent's sign pops up in the house two doors down. So I go knock on their door and I was like, well, yeah, like, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, well, we just found out we're getting a job transfer. And we saw that, uh, that they had their house for sale. So we went over to the open house and asked her to come and list ours too. And I was like, so like, I'm like, that cost me two transactions. To, so here's my point. Yeah, hopefully I've given you enough pain. Go through your phone and talk to the people, that you, your friends, family members, neighbors, talk to them and just ask them if you have a real estate need or if you heard of somebody, who would you call? And same if they go, uh, Russ from Century 21, to say, I'm like, oh, that's great, awesome. I'll you know, talk to you later. Okay, good. Well, actually, so let me give you this. So another guy that um, lives up the street from me, um, I called him. After that experience, I started calling everybody that I knew <laughs> because I was like, I'm making sure they know I want their business. So I called up this guy. His name's Jay. And I called him up and I said, hey, Jay, if you had a real estate need, who would you call? And he said, you know, Russ, as much as I like you, I like just feel like we want, I want to keep business separate from that. And so I wouldn't be willing to list my house with you. So what I said, Aiden, was I said, okay, but if you heard of somebody, if you had a family member or someone, would you refer them to me? And he said, totally would do that. And I said, oh, let me ask you this. Would you let me refer one of my associates at the office to help you then if you had a real estate need? And he said, yeah, I would do that. So if in the event they go, oh, I've already got somebody, great. Well, because sometimes you will have people, as I called through, I had some that would say, oh, my brother's an agent or my cousin or whatever. Okay, but if you heard of somebody that needed to do it, would you be willing to refer them to me? Even I get it that you couldn't use me, but would you refer your friends and family members or other members, whatever, to me? Yeah, I would do that. So here's the thing with Jay. He did over the years. He, I put him in the database, followed this process. He referred people to me all the time. So I ran into him, this is a couple of years ago now. I ran into him not long after I had taught this class. And I said, Jay, just so you know, I talk about you in one of the classes that I teach. And he's like, for what? And I said, because remember when I called you and asked you if you had a real estate need, if you'd use me and you told me no? He's like, I never said that. I would totally use you. <laughs> so he said it though, I promise. All right, so yeah. It, um, so like now that I have, I don't know if this is going to need like a bigger, bigger picture, but so you have a group of 200 people that you call and you get permission. Are you checking in with them once per week? That's, pro let's go to, that's protocol right, so number three. To see big, bigger picture. Okay, so let's go to protocol number three. But first, actually, before I do three, let me, let me do one other thing first. Okay, so for, with the people you know, just start by calling and saying, if you had a need, who would you use? Because you want to find out. Like I said, the worst thing you can have happen is your next door neighbor's house go up for sale. And then they, they say to you, oh, well, I didn't realize that you even, like they don't say it this way. But what they're saying is I didn't realize you wanted my business. You know, they won't necessarily say that. They may say, oh, well, I, I didn't know how it worked. Or, or same thing. I had one of my nephews uh, ended up listing his house. Same thing. I called him up and I said, why? And he goes, I just... I didn't know how it worked. So I just called up the closest real estate office to me and said, I need an agent. And I was like, well, I could have helped you. Well, I didn't know you. I, did, I didn't know how. See, they, they don't know how it works. They think you come here to the office and that we give you leads and you have a certain territory or whatever. And they don't know how it works. So you got to make sure you tell them how it works. Okay. So now what about though, if I go out door knocking? So I said, you should still incorporate this with door knocking. 
Now, remember, I'm prospecting on two parallel tracks. I'm looking for the now business. My, or let me say it even this way. You have a primary objective and a secondary objective in your prospecting. Your primary objective of prospecting is what? To thinks like we have one person, sort of two. <laughs> thanks, friend of What's your what is your objective when you're prospecting? Okay, we got four or five now. What is your objective when you're prospecting? Thank you. Gosh, is it that was difficult? Yeah, your primary objective is to set an appointment. But are you going to get an appointment every time? No. So then when I don't get an appointment, my secondary objective is I want to add them to this database of 200 people. Okay? That's what I want to do. Now, but 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 that presents another problem. Because what is the first protocol? So what happens if I already have 200? I go out and I knock on Wanda's door and Wanda says, yeah, we actually think we are going to sell in about four months. Okay, well, I have a select group of, so make she let, but she won't set an appointment with me. Okay, well, I have a select group of people. So notice the script's about the same. I have a select group of people that I stay in touch with, keep them updated on real estate, and I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? Sure. Great. What that means is I will give you a phone call periodically. I'm going to give you some information about what's going on in the real estate market and then just check in with you from time to time. Is that okay? Sure. Great. Let me get your phone number, your email address. Bam. Now I got it. Okay. But now I have a dilemma. I now have 201 people, but what's protocol number one? I can't have 201. I can only have 200. So perfect. So what do I have to do? So now what <laughs> this, now this is the magic in the system, guys. This is what makes it magical right here is because I can only have 200. So what does it force me to do? It, it forces me to look at the other 200 because now I have 201. It forces me to look at the other 200. And essentially what I'm saying is this, is Wanda going to be better to stay in touch with than any one of these other 200? Yeah. And as long as the answer is yes, then I figure out which one and get rid of them. Because mm -hmm. I can only have 200. Go ahead. Do you just put the other ones on like the back burner? Because there's like the A plus A, B, C, and I don't know why people have D, but yeah. I just delete those. So for me, you can do it however you want. I don't recommend that though. Yeah. Me, and here's why. What ha if you still hold on to that person, then all of a sudden it's not a closed system and it morphs into now you got 4,000 people in a database that you don't stay in touch with any of them. That's my only concern. Yeah. That's you? Well, <laughs> okay. But no, that, that's what typically happens. So, so for me, my recommendation is get rid of them. Now, here's the good news though. Let me give you the good news on this. If you have had some of the people in here and been following these protocols that we've talked about, What's going to happen is even though, let's say that Aiden was the one in here, the uh, one of the other 200 that I decide, you know what, I'm going to get rid of him. Now, I, we'll talk about how to know in just a second, but I'm just going to get rid of Aiden out of the system. I'm not going to call him up and say, hey, Aiden, remember that select group of people I put you in? You're no longer sure. in. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah so now so now hold on though i have had agents who do that i had one agent no she well what she did is she just sent an email to aiden and i didn't ever do it this way but you can do it this way if you want she sent an email and just said, hey, I just wanted you to know that like, I feel like it's, I'm wasting your time because I haven't re received anything from you. So I'm gonna pull you out of the system. And he wrote back to her email and said, no, please don't. I actually like the, so I, after that was when I was like, well, maybe you should. I just never did. I always just took them, moved them off to the site. Now, in, let's say though, that I had been staying in touch with Aiden for a year and then I'll, I've now quit. But six months later, he decides he wants to sell his house. What's, what do you think he's going to do? He's, he's going to probably going to call me. Yeah. Right. And guess what he's going to say? Where 
Yeah, yeah it's kind of, hey, I haven't heard from you for a while. Doing real estate? Yeah, yeah, that's usually the question. Are you still doing real estate? And I'm just, yeah, I still am. Oh, well, we need to sell our house. Great. Now I put him back in the system and I go, okay, well, I'll get rid of Rick. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever it is. But, but <laughs> so the key thing with this, this is the magic of it though, guys, is you have to be willing to say, is this lead that I just got from my prospecting better than any? Is it more likely that I'm going to do a deal with her than any of the other 200? Any of them, not, not all of them, just any one of them. And if the answer is yes, get rid of it. What happens though, if I pull it in and, and I'm like, eh, I'm not sure she's any better than any of these other ones. If I'm not sure that she's better, or maybe she's not better than any of these. You don't put her in the system. Then just don't put her in. And, now, but if you've given her a card and built some report, there is a small chance she might call you. But again, that she's not as golden as those 200. Yeah, that's the, the whole key is what happens as soon as you hit 200. Now, so if I'm Abe that's brand new today, I'm going to build it up to the 200. So in the, in the meantime of building it up to the 200, you aren't having to, to hold up that new lead and compare it to all the rest. If they say they'll go in to begin with, they go in. But if I'm Brenda Lee or Aaron or Stephanie or Wanda, you know, some of these that have been in the business or Paul has been in the business for a while, like the threshold to getting in is a lot harder. Meaning longer and see if they're working in the right. Table. Say that again. Data longer. About yeah. Longer. Yeah. So, but yeah. you, but think of it just if you're new to this, anybody that says yes goes in. But the longer that the more what happens is the more you refine it, which is why I'm saying mature it, the more you do that, you're figuring out who is going to be giving you referrals and who's not. And the ones who aren't, you're constantly just getting rid of. So early yeah. on, it's going to turn over a lot. Yes. I feel like yeah. doing what she said with this 200 people, you could put in that 200 people, A plus people, B plus C plus people. Yeah. And you already have a general idea. Like, all right, who is probably I'm going to kick out? And who's like, like super solid? Yeah. So like I have a list of people that I'm like, mm, I'll talk to you once every quarter. Not happy to talk to them, but I'm still out there. And every once in a blue moon, I do get a by or a follow up. And then I have the group of people that I, they're my bread and butter, right? That's yep. your yeah, and that's like, I'm totally fine. If you wanted to, within the 200, put them into force, you know, 50 that are the top and like, however you want to do it. But at the end of the day, yes, what you're doing is you're evaluating these 200 people constantly and saying, can I find somebody better? See, like, I'll give you an example. My best friend growing up, they, um, when uh, the, some townhouses are out in West Valley, when they were being built, my friend went and moved in there. Well, his wife would cut my hair. Well, before long, she was doing the hair of all the ladies that lived in the, uh, those townhouses. So I would go get my hair cut. And almost every time when I was there, because all of these townhouses were built brand new, everybody had bought them. They were all college students. I mean, not all, but a majority were college students that were finishing up school. Well, as they finished and got their degrees, they went and got jobs and were moving out. Well, what I noticed is every time I would go get my hair cut, Terry would be saying to me, oh, you need to call this person because her husband just got this new job and they need to sell their townhouse. And like every, like I started scheduling a haircut, like I wanted to go like every other week to get my hair cut because every time I showed up, she was like, you need to call Anne to make it even better. My, my buddy was the Bishop of the ward. So between the two of them, he's the bishop. He's well, they would come in and tell him, we're getting divorced. We got to sell our house. He, oh, you got to call my buddy Russ. And then his <laughs> wife would be doing their hair. So between the two of them, like to some extent, what I'm telling you, people that cut hair and ecclesiastical uh, <laughs> are great people to have in this database because a lot of times they know what's going on when people are getting divorced. And so I like think that. it's really relevant, Russ. And I think everybody gets it. But the 200 are 200 mouthpieces for you. And, that's well, and if I, they're not, get rid, of, get rid them. of them. Because it's refining it to those 200 that your ally, your advocate, that anything's ever said. There's 200 people out there rooting for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to really learn. It's very hard to go from 1,500 people in my database to 200. And I'm like, because I felt like I had to. But the fact remains, I didn't have time to count or call 1,500 people. Yep. Yeah. 
you yeah. take care of those 200, I'll tell you that much. 100% you do. All right, let me give you the very best part. Now that Michael's <laughs> <laughs> right. That's awesome. Okay, so now let me show you how this works. So let me I'm gonna erase most of this here. Should be part of like the 12 steps. It is like less effort, less time, more money. Yeah. Okay, so let me show you how this worked. So let's say, so I'm gonna show you the magic of this real quick. But I'm gonna use again, I'm not giving you permission to do this number, it's still 200. But for the sake of the ease of the math on this, watch. So let's say I have 100 people. And here's the way, remember I said that I always called it a jelly bean jar? The reason was I used to, and I need to get one again now that I can, but I used to have actually a jelly bean jar that I would bring into the class that had red and green jelly beans. So green is gonna represent money. So these are the people who are gonna do business or refer business to you. Red is the people who are not. Okay, so let's say that I had 100 people, and just for whatever reason, 50 of them were green and 50 were red. Okay, now I go out and do some prospect, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what type of prospecting. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Any form of prospecting is what you're going to use to feed into the system. So I go do some prospecting. Let's say I get 10 leads from my prospect. And now, when I get the lead and I add them, so if I said to Wanda, I've got a select group of people that I stay in touch with and I want to add you to that list, would that be okay? And she says, yes. In my mind, she's green, okay? But how often, maybe not, maybe let me not ask it that way. Does it ever happen that somebody says, yes, you can stay in touch with me and you can add me to a select group of people? but they're only doing it to be nice. Oh, they don't really the want you to stay in touch with them. All the time. So, okay, so keep in mind, but in my mind, she's green because she said yes. But maybe as soon as she shut the door or hung up the phone, she, she's already forgotten me and has no intention of ever doing anything with me, which means she's really red, mm -hmm. but I think she's green. You follow me? So another way you could think of it is that none of them are green or red. They're all clear. Like they're, they're, they're just over time, they either turn green or they turn red. You can think of it that way too, if you want. But I just always choose to think of it as I only want to add people that are green. Meaning if I said to her, can I put you in this select group of people? And she said, well, you sure can, but my husband's an agent and I'm going to list my house with him. No. I mean, I wouldn't add her, right? No. So I just choose to always think of everybody is green and over time they're going to turn red. Okay. If they're not red. Now, so I add 10 what I think are green, but let's pretend for a minute that I could add a, that I had a crystal ball and I could see into the future. And so I could really see who was going to use me or not. What percentage and, and they're like, I don't really care what number you guys say on this but have it be on the low side at least. Out of those 10, how many are really gonna end up doing a transaction with me? Okay, I'll do, I heard three more than anything. We'll do three, okay. So now watch what happens. Now, again, I just make sure that you follow me. In my mind, I'm never adding a red, even though I'm about to show you, because if because we have a crystal ball and we could see into the future, we know three of them are going to end up doing business or referring business to me and the other seven aren't. But if I knew that up front, I wouldn't have added it, okay? But in reality, I just added 10 people, three of them are green and seven were red. So what that means is I now have 53 green, 57 red, and I now have 110 people, okay? So now somebody pull out a calculator and help me real quick because to begin with, my odds were 50-50. Somebody do 57 into 110 and tell me what the percentage is. Okay, so I'm just going to round it up to 52. So look what just happened. This is the problem with not having a fixed in size system. So look, I just went from 50-50, 50% were going to do business or refer business to me, and 50% weren't. 
but now I'm up to 110 and look what happened to my percentage of people. This is why when you hear these agents that have four or five, 6,000 people in their database are getting typically a one or a 2% return is because this is what happens. You start adding more and more people that aren't going to do business with you along the way. But because we understand this system and our first protocol is what? Fixed in size. I can't. Now, actually, even before that, let me just say real quick. So notice what happened. My workload just went up 10%. I have to do 10% more work to get 2% less. So even though the number is greater, the percentage went down. But because I know I can only have to stay fixed in size, I can only have 100 people. So now what do I want to do? So I need to get rid of how many? And which 10? Should I get rid of any of these 10? So I want to get rid of 10 of these. So now watch what happens. So now I subtract 10 out here. So now I have 47 red, 53 green. I'm back to the 100 where I want to be. And now look what happened. <clears throat> Hmm. Yeah. So what's going to happen if I next month do it again? So let's just hypothetically say, let's reverse these numbers. The next month, I get seven that if we could see into the future, we would see we're going to be green. Three that end up being red. So now I'm back to the same problem of 110. But I, so I can't, I have, can, I have to get rid of 10. So which 10 should I get rid of? Red, red. So now look what just happened. Now I'm at 40%, 60% here, still have the same amount of work on a monthly basis. Brilliant. But what I, this is the magic of the closed system is by keeping it closed, you're constantly just increasing the people who either do business with you or will refer business to you. Imagine if you had 200 people like my buddy and his wife that we're constantly out looking for, like literally I would go get my haircut every five weeks from her. And every five weeks, she would give me a referral. Either she or he would give me a referral. Like what if you had 200 people that were doing that for you? What would it do? See, and all this is, is a matter of you put anybody in, see the magic, who cares who you put in? It doesn't matter who you put in. What matters? Yeah, or who you get rid of. Yeah, you can say it either way, but really what it doesn't matter who you put in as long as they're better than everybody else or anyone else, I should say. Chad. So I had the question and I'm starting to think about my SOI and I have like some people in my SOI like right down the street. I see them three or four times a week. Our kids are best friends, you know, stuff like that. They're, they're in my same ward, and you know, I, I they're they're frequent like that. Would it make sense to move them out because I'm already in their mind? No. Mm -hmm. And replace that with someone. No. No. Okay. Nope. Because you because again, you only need like no. I would say no. Now, in, in the event once it's matured, meaning once you can see that you're getting consistent business from your SOI, grow that number. Then you could grow it if you gotcha. wanted. That's fine. The thing though, he said they're in your, you're in their mind, but do you talk to them about real estate? All the time. All the time. Okay, good. Well, that's a good segue to where we're going next. Number three. Okay. So, um, but can you see though, before I go to number three, can you see that if you did this, if you just, every time you got a lead, you held it up against the other people in here to say, is this person better than any of these? And if they are, put them in and get rid of the one that's not so great. Can you see where over time it's just going to build this group of people, like Rick said, that are going to go out and be your spokesperson? As you're first developing it and working through it, um, and nothing's coming out of it, are you just kind of gauging how was the call? Was it yes. warm? Was they, were, they, were they reluctant to talk to you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do they, yeah. Do they, yeah. Do they even they take the call? Right. Yeah. Because that's what you're going to find is to some extent, what's going to happen is you're going to have some that say, yeah, you can add me to your list. And then as you try to contact them, they never respond to you ever or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So number three, third protocol, which ties into what Chad was just talking about. You need to have contact with these people one time 
per month, personal, and one time per month, either email or mail. Like two contacts per month? Yeah, two, if you want to think of it as I, one personal contact. And when I say personal contact, that could be an, a uh, text, could be a voicemail, could be a, um, I loved last week for you guys that were down at Climb, um, Colton Lindsay's idea of the voice memo thing, could be a voice memo, or you actually talk to them, or you run into them in the neighborhood or whatever. So, let, so here's the key though, so for what Chad had brought up, here's what I did. The people like you were saying that were just down the street that I would run into all the time at the park or, or that at my kids' baseball games or whatever, I would only talk real estate with them once a month unless they brought it up. If they bring it up, you're good to go. But if they don't bring it up, only one time per month ever bring it up. So if you go to the gym every day and you've got people that you see at the gym constantly, only talk real estate once a month that you bring it up but any time if they bring it up, okay? So would the, the personal interaction be more personal than maybe your email or your, would be the business? Yes, yeah. So, the, so typically what, here's what I recommend right now is I would recommend on these people, the 200, put them into Zap, which at the end of this month, now February, well, by mid-March, we're going to have a new, the Moxie Work system. And it's, it has an equivalent, I found out recently, to what I'm about to say about Zap. So in the meantime, though, I would put the people in Zap and put them on the watched homes alert or home value updates, I think is what it's called, actually. Home value updates. And so, Aaron, I would use the home value updates. And here's, here's why. A lot of times what people will do when they're sending the mailing to the people is they'll go sign up for, like, those recipe cards or whatever. And what you don't want to do is be known as the recipe card person. Like you want to be known as the real estate. And so for me, what I found worked the very best, and I usually bring it, and I just realized I forgot to bring it, is I usually have what I'll show, would show you what I used to use. But um, I always send to them either the homes that are in their area for sale or the ones that have sold in their area. Of just, just wanted to give you an update of what's going on in your area. That is the, my opinion. The protocol is you just need to send them an email or a mail and you can do a combination. You could once a quarter send a mailing to them. But I found sending them what was for sale in their area or what homes are under contract or sold in their area is the best thing because everybody's curious about that. And it then becomes, the other thing actually that I didn't realize. So what I always did back before I started training and I was doing this, I had a newsletter that I would send out that I would do for their area of here's the homes that are for sale, here's what's under contract, and here's what's sold. And I had a lady that I had worked with before I came into real estate. She lived in the um, condo complex in Holiday, A. La Chapelle. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, she lived in there. And so every month I would send to her, here's what's happened in the A. La Chapelle condos. And inevitably which how many there's like 30 buildings up there i don't know do you know how many there's a lot yeah. and so inside of each building is probably 10 or yeah so condo units she so anytime i would send her one from her building that had sold she would call me up and be like russ this is chris you sold the condo right below me and you didn't come and say hi and i'd always have to say chris i didn't sell it it was some other agent but what I learned from that was the people think when you're sending this to them, they think that every one of those is your listings, which also then creates the confidence in them of you're the agent for this area. You sell everything like that's And I it didn't matter how many times I would tell her, Chris, it wasn't me. I promise. If I sell one of the units in your building, I will come knock on your door. And every time, though, there was one from her building, she would call me. Okay. So that's what I would recommend that you do. Send something real estate. And then, yeah, as you're saying, Aaron, for me, the, the phone call or the contact, and like I say, even just using a, the voice memo off of your phone of just, hey, just checking in with you, making sure you got the mailing that I sent, wanted to see if you had any questions about any of the properties. Is there anybody you know of I could help or if there's anything I can help you with? I mean, like essentially that's it. 
I mean, you can, you can do the forward where you call and ask them about their family and like, that's fine too. But essentially the purpose of the phone call though, is for you to touch base with them. Now let's, I'm going to give you protocol four since because of what I said, the purpose of the phone call is not to find somebody that wants to do real estate. Okay. This is counterintuitive. So what I'm about to tell you now is opposite of what you think. Remember I said that people will leave the class and you'll forget and not do this. If you call looking for a deal, it's not going to work the same. The purpose of your phone call is protocol number four is I'm calling looking for the red. So the purpose of my phone call every month is not to try to find somebody to do a deal with. It's not about finding the deal. It's about finding who can I not ever have to call again. <laughs> and once you hit 200 right yeah well but actually even before i hit 200 i'm still looking for meaning like if i call if i wasn't at 200 and i called you aiden and you said to me don't ever call me again i'm not going to leave you in the list even though i'm not to 200 but i'm going to be more lenient meaning like if you hadn't said that then yes i'm probably going to leave you in the list until i hit 200 so what was the purpose of the call number four? To get the purpose is to find the people who you can get rid of. Oh, right. What you're looking for in the per So when you're making that monthly phone call, you're trying to find who are the ones that I don't ever have to call. Remember this free throw thing? That's what you're looking for okay. is who are the people I could get a free throw from? Meaning who are the ones that, that really don't want me calling? And now here's the difference. If I'm calling looking for a green, that's a different conversation than if I'm looking for the red. Now, what I don't want you to do is think, I'm not trying to convince Aiden to be red. I'm not going to try to convince him. But if I'm calling like looking for the red and what we talked about earlier, if when I get him on the phone, he sounds hesitant at all to taking my call, then guess what I want to do? Red. I want to, I want to first, I'm going to try to reestablish, do I still have permission? Okay. See, and if I was looking for green though, and I kind of sense maybe he's red, I would never ask. I would never say, but because I'm looking for the red, I'm going to, at that point say, Hey, Aiden, are you still okay with me contacting you every month and staying in touch about real estate? Give you like a certain answer. Um, just uh, sure, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now because I'm looking for red, I would say, okay, but if you ever are not comfortable with it or you don't see value, will you please let me know? Yeah. See, if I was looking for green, I would never say that to him. But because I want, I here's the thing: I only want people in this database that want to be in there. And here's another key thing. So I'm going to give you a few ideas of how do you know if they're red. Well, how you know they're red is if, what I said earlier, they tell you, don't ever call me again, they're red. You drive by their house and another agent's for sale sign is in the front yard, they're red. Now, luckily that doesn't happen very often. But the other way is when I call him up on the phone, if I, if I get any type of a feeling at all that he's not interested in it, I'm just gonna ask, hey, are you okay with me still staying in touch with you? Because if you're not, I don't want to waste your time or my time of me. But because I also know, look, I want to go find somebody who wants to be my advocate with it. Does that make sense? So I'm looking for the red. You call looking for the red. You're trying to find the people you don't have to call anymore. So if you call and you sense they're hesitant at all, take it head on and just go back right up to establish, do you still have permission to do it? And if he says no, then good. I just found a red. Now I go prospect tomorrow and replace. Because anybody, if he's not wanting me to contact him and doesn't want me to stay in touch, anybody else that I put in there is going to be better than that. Yeah. And that's what we're constantly trying to do is just sort through that. Well, especially if like when you had approached me and I said, yeah, that's fine. You know, a, a lot of times it's because you don't want to say no. To yeah. Them. But that second call, it's a lot easier to say no to them if you're really not interested and don't want them. Mm -hmm. I mean, or they just don't take the call. I mean, it just it just weeds itself out so much easier that second call. Yep. Okay. First. Good. So now let's go to that. So that's the next piece. So let's say whether I did the voice memo or I called or I sent a text and just said, you know, hey, checking in, seeing if you had any real estate questions, if there's anything I can do to help you. They don't respond. Now, again, you decide on this, but you guys know I'm a baseball fan, right? Have I? Yes. 
Yes. Communicated that enough? <laughs> I need to tell some more stories. Okay. So because of that, for me, the rule was you get three strikes, three strikes and you're out. So here's what I always did. Now, so let me show you what happened. So let's say that I tried to contact Aiden, whether, however, text, phone call, voice memo, whatever it is. He doesn't respond. This is after I'm in your green, right? Yep. I'm, it, as far as I'm concerned, you're in the 200, <coughs> all 200 are green as far as I'm concerned. So I send him a voice memo or whatever. He doesn't respond. There's strike one. In the next month, I try again. He doesn't respond. Strike two. The third month, if he doesn't respond, then here's what I'm going to do. The next one is going to be this. I'm going to either call him or I'm going to send a text or whatever. And I'm going to say, Aiden, I have a really important question for you. Give me a call. So for me, when I'm ready, when I'm trying to decide, are they read because they're not responding? I'm going to say, I'm going to send some type of a message to him, whether it's a voice memo, a text, whatever. I have a really important question for you. Give me a call. Now, if he doesn't call me, what is he telling me? He is not interested. Therefore, he's red. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, what if he does call? So he calls me on the phone. Then you go back to two. That's right. I go right back to number two. So call me on the phone. Oh, okay. So ring, ring. Hello. Oh, my God. For us, what's so important? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. Hey, just, I, yeah, I had a really important question for you. I just wanted to find out, are you still okay with me staying in touch with you about real estate and keeping you updated on what's going on? Oh, um, oh yes. <laughs> okay. Can, now, if they're hesitant like that, I'm going to say, okay, but will you promise me if you're ever not interested, you'll let me know? Because what I don't want to do is be bothering you, sending you information you don't want. So deal? Yep. Sounds See, good. that's different when you're looking. When I'm looking for red, I'm going to give them permission. I don't want to convince them to be red, but I want to give them permission. You give them the opt out. That's right. I just want to give them an out if he wants it. And if he wants it, I want him to take it. Now, let me give you the last way you know if they're red. So I've got a database of 200 people in there. You should have those people set up so you're going to call so many per day. Well, so let's just say if I work 20 days in the month, and I got 200 people, how many of those do I need to call a day? Okay, so now I've got my 10 for today that I need to call. It pops up and I see Paul and I go, oh. <laughs> I know, I, 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 want, I had to pick on somebody that I knew could take it, okay? So I see Paul and I go, oh, I don't really wanna call Paul. What, 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 is, what have I learned about that person. Yeah. If you look at their name and you don't want to call them for some reason, guess what? You should not have people in there that you look at it and go, oh, shoot, I don't want to have to call them. <laughs> now, if though, every time I call Paul, he gives me a ton of deals, but I have to stay on the phone for an hour with him. And that's the reason I might still keep him in. Oh, yeah. But for the most part, if you look at their name and you're like, oh, really? I don't want to. Because here's what happens. And I'll, I'm going to take a risk here, Brenda Lee. Do you have any in your database that are like that? You're like, oh. yes, but I'm getting much better because they go right to the garbage. Okay, perfect. Because because that's what should happen is if you look at it and go, I just don't really want to call this person. Guess what? You don't have to. Like we aren't here telling you who you have to call. This is your business. When you look at a name and you don't want to call the person, get rid of them. They're red. And because that's what stops us all from working our SOI as it is, is we're worried we're bugging them. We look at the name. We don't really want to call them. And if we would instead just take it head on and go, I'm going to just call and ask them if they'll give me permission. And if they do, then I'll stay in touch. And if they don't, good. Like, I'm not upset when I find a red. I'm excited. Because what it means is I just increased how good my system is. Following me? Yep. Go ahead, Chuck. So then those those calls and, and your 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 two hundred people describe those calls. Is it like eighty percent? Hey, how are you doing? You know, just want to check in on your family. You know, what's going on? Da 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 da. da. And then twenty percent, like, hey, I just want to make sure. Like, talk talk to me about. Okay, that. so. It's going to vary depending on who it is. Meaning like if it's the guy you were talking about that you said, should I even put him in or not? Right. 
I might call and have some chit chat with them. But if it's somebody that I met door knocking, I'm typically for me, there's not a right answer to this, by the way. But for me, I usually approached it more of, hey, this is a business call kind of a thing. But I would say there is nothing wrong with building some rapport with them. Hey, meaning like, so I may say to Wanda, hey, so anything exciting happening with, with your family? You know, while I've got her on the phone and she says, well, yeah, we're going to be going to Hawaii next month. Well, I would write down, they're going to be going to Hawaii next month. Then the next month when I call, for sure, I'm going to start with, hey, Wanda, so I, when we talked last month, you guys are going to Hawaii. How was the trip and, and all that? So yeah, however you want to do it like that. But typically, if it was a friend or a family member, I actually approached it more as, hey, this one's my business call. And I just wanted to check in to see if you had any real estate needs, if you have any questions from it. Because well, for me, at least for me, I just was like on the personal friend ones, I wanted it to be, this is the business call right. so I can get off and go to the next. But with, with if it's Wanda, I, I actually might spend a little more time. Of, sure. How's your family? Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, I'm at, at the point right now where I'm doing this weeding out. I didn't realize I was doing the system. Okay. okay? But I am. Good. Basically. But there's some people in that old list that I am trying to decide whether to be red or green. And I have not talked to them for a long time. Have that conversation. Okay. Okay, good. So uh, what I'm going to do is permission. So, so give me, think of somebody specific and let's do it real quick. So who, you be that person, mm -hmm. but tell me how you know them that you haven't talked to for a long time. Give me their name and, and give me a quick uh, okay, uh, someone that I haven't talked to for a long time, they told me to call them back in six months, and I'm going to say they're Jane Doe, yeah. and I haven't talked to them in six months, I passed that point where they said, call me in six months, so okay. it's actually been a year. Okay. And so... But I, how do you know them? Um, a referral. Okay, they were referred by someone. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And so you called up the referral. They said, we're not ready yet. Call us in about six months. Mm -hmm. And it's now been a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna now going to, so now I'm you calling. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Jane, this is uh, Wanda Allison from Century 21. We talked a, a few months ago and you had said you weren't quite ready yet. You wanted me to give you a little bit more time. So I just was giving you a follow-up call to see if uh, you guys are, have any real estate needs that I can help you. Well, I did. I mean, it's been a long time since I've talked to you. <clears throat> I didn't know you were still doing real estate. Yeah, I apologize for that. And I'm not, I'm, quite honestly, I'm not really sure what happened, how the time got away from me. But I apologize for that. But is that something you guys are still looking at doing real estate or not? Well, actually, yes, we are. You are still looking at it. Yeah. Okay. So we, we've had things happen, so we've had to push it back. Okay, so would an afternoon or an evening be better for us to meet up and talk? Now, well, so, but hold on, because if that's my primary objective, I want the appointment, sure. but what if she's still not ready? Okay, well, not, no, we're still, we're still a few months out. Still, still a few months out. Two months. Okay, well, hey, just to ensure that, that, that I stay in touch with you, would it be okay if I just give you a call next month? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. I've got a select group of people see, that I stay in touch with that I just keep updated on. And in fact, one of the things that may be helpful for you is I've got an email that I'll just send out to you monthly, let you know what's going on with real estate, either in your area or the area you're interested in. And uh, would that be okay? Yeah, I'd like that. Perfect. And then I'll just give you a call next month, see if you have any questions on it. So bam, now I'm right back into this. And they're green, green now. Yeah, they're still they're green. Definitely yeah. green. If when I called, she would have said, Oh, yeah, we did, but we listed our house six months ago, like we told you we were going to, and we sold it. Then they're red. Yeah. I just, okay. yeah. If you do your homework too, like if you knew her address, and you could look on MLS and see if there's. Yeah, it probably would be a good idea. Do that first. Yeah, yeah, do that like first. Because if it has sold, research, forget it. So you know, yeah. Well, not yes and no, because if they have sold it, and uh, you do the apology and you still ask them for business or maybe a relative yeah. or another person. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're right. Out. Like, hey, I see you sold your home. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Did you go? I don't have your address. Yeah. 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 But here's the thing. Yes. While you're 
if you're still working to get to the 200, totally do that. If you've got the 200, the purpose of the phone call is to see, is she better than any of, any of these others? And if she is, add her. If she's not, don't. Okay, so last thing, let me show you how this works and how powerful this is, okay? So watch this. So I've got 200 people in there. Now remember, I'm considering it mature when 60% of the people, let me change color so that it shows up a little bit. I'm considering it mature when 60% of those people will either do business with you or refer somebody to you. And, and really, you could somewhat, again, I would probably say if I'm Abe, I actually don't care if the person's not going to refer somebody to me for four years. Because if you had 200 people and they all gave you a transaction within a four-year period, would you be okay with that? Yeah. I mean, that'd be 50 transactions. So, so to some extent, if I'm brand new, I actually would even be willing to add somebody into this, even if it's like, it's like I said, if I'm him, if they'll agree to go in, go in. But as it matures, you're now going to start looking for people that actually really are going to do something or refer. You're looking for the people that are going to be a referring machine. So if you found and had 60% of the 200 that would give you a referral, that would be how many? Okay. So does every time somebody give you a referral, does it turn into a deal? Meaning like what Wanda already said, she called them and they're like, oh, in about six months. And then you waited a year. <laughs> okay. So... I have to figure yes. that number. I know you're fine. I'm teasing you. So out of the 120, uh, let's say that out of that 120, only 60 turned into an appointment, not a transaction, just an appointment. And then of those, half of those actually turned into a transaction. That would be 30 transactions a year. How much is our average commission? Ballpark. Yeah, 15 grand. Let's say 10, just to be okay. we'll <clears throat> solo be agents too, by the way. Yeah. So that would equal $300,000. Okay, that's good. For a wow. For a minute. But that's why I'm saying to you, that's why it, this, it's a math problem. This is the math problem. As long as what you will do is treat your database as a closed system, where what you're going to do is constantly be putting people in and getting rid of the ones that are worse. That's why I, That's why to me, I'm like, this is very realistic to take place because if you're constantly just maturing it, getting rid of the people who aren't, if you put somebody in and after a year, they haven't referred to you, get rid of them, put somebody else in. Because eventually you'll get to where 60% or 120 out of that 200 will refer people to you. Now, so I brought up Tonya Messina before. In fact, I need to call her and just, touch base to see kind of where she's at and what she's doing. But she had 97 people and it would turn into over $300,000 in income from the 97 people. The, the, and this has changed from when I trained her in it. When I first trained her, she had kids that were like four or five, six-ish, that age. So her, she was making this income working 20 hours a week because she then went and hired an assistant. It was her sister to work the other 20 hours. So basically she took a full-time job, had her sister do part of it. She did the other part of it with 97 people, which, so that's, once it matures, that's how you decide how many this should be, the fixed in size number. For her, it was 97 because when she pulled out a calendar and looked at how many people she wanted to call each day of the, of the month, at the end of the month, then she added it up and said, that's my number. That's how you want to do it too, is just figure out how many people, once it's mature, again, this is being recorded, so mm -hmm. once it's matured, you can change it to whatever number you want. And the way I would recommend you doing it is look at how many people per day am I willing to call and then add that up for the month. And that's where your fixed and size number should look like. And then it'll just keep going. Now, so with Tonya, though, her percentage got way higher than six out of the 97 people in order for you to get into her database you pretty much have to do a transaction with her because she's got already 97 people that are solid people that do it but the other thing that will happen i've had two times in this class when i've taught it when i bring up her name 
that I've had people raise my hand and say, I was in that database of people. And that's why I went and got my real estate license because they started noticing they were constantly <laughs> referring people to Tony and was like, I had to just go get my license. So anyway, does that make sense? Okay, what other questions? Question. Yes. So if you work 20 days a month, you're calling 10 people with 200. So if I want to call 30 a day, I should be at 600. That's why I think I my my numbers are big. Yeah. Because I'm in my if office. If you're good, I'm yeah. Calling, 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 if you're calling. good with calling three or thirty people a day, I should have 600. Then you should do six hundred. The, the the key thing is, and and this has changed from when I first learned to do this. The mailing, I wasn't doing any emails. It was all mail, and and so for me, the the time intensity to put it all together because I was paying my assistant to go. My number was 150. Once it had matured, I went to 150. My assistant every month had a spreadsheet for all 150 people. She would go, what I was telling you Zap will do on the home value updates automatically, she would take and go off of a spreadsheet and go to the MLS and do a search every month for all 150 people, then put create a newsletter that was unique. Well, for the most part, there, there were some, like in my neighborhood, there were probably 15 or 20 people that all got the exact same newsletter. But for the most part, she created around 100 newsletters that were unique and then mailed them to people. And 600 just wouldn't have worked then. Like I couldn't, it would have, it took her a solid week to do 150. So it would have taken her the whole entire month. But now everything's so automated. Right. And that I just think it, 200 seems just, totally too low for me yeah so for you based on what you're saying and, and how you're already doing it if you want to do 600 do 600 but, but that's all you're doing other these i don't see that's the other thing it. this is all i do yeah i'm not well right i'm not a good example so. <laughs> no you are the perfect example for this to work yes you are right, but no you can just what Aaron, do you want to call for sale by owners for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Yeah, like so. I that's why not, she's the perfect I example. I called for sale by owner for five, six years. Yeah, right. So question for Aaron. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Aaron, why are you still calling for sale by owners? Because I haven't done this yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. Right. And I, why don't you are are you still calling? Them? You're not. No, really. I haven't called. I was going to say you're I not. That's oh, why yeah. I picked on. Right. So, right. so Russ, that's why it can take up to nine months depending on how hard you work to get your core. Well, and yes, thank you for saying that. Because early on, if I'm Abe and I'm just out knocking on doors yeah. to get people and put them in, you're going to have a lot that early on don't ever answer the phone when you call them back. So right. early so on, hard. it's going to turn, his 200 is going to turn over a lot faster than Brenda Lee's would. Brenda Lee's could probably identify her 600s. That's going to be her number versus if I'm a, it's going to be turning over like crazy yeah. for the first few months. He's going to be changing people in and out, in and out, in and out versus Brenda Lee is hardly going to change anybody in and out. Right. I already have a huge, like Eric can think of like past clients and like really people who already know him in the business versus like him. He's really like, he's talking to people who don't even know him and like, right. So, so you're going to have that one. His one probably would take nine months potentially. I mean, I don't know what you've got in terms of just a sphere already but if you are going to be easy what oh yeah but so early on it's going to turn over a lot more but the more it matures that that threshold to getting in gets higher and higher like it's harder and harder for people to get into it so and it's interesting um on the slides you don't even realize who can be in your slides you need to start with making a list of all the people you know and then start putting them in the red and the green. I mean, all the people you know, and then well, if they're red, don't put them in. Well, I mean, well, all the people you know, call them. Yes, and get them call and get permission. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you need to start with saving. Oh, hush them out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, on this is like this is Wanda. Huh? Who is this? Oh, this real quick. Yeah. All right. What other questions? Right. It's true. Though. Um, just any advice to the point of compiling a list, like and starting from. Not zero, but like starting the process of should I just compile and call them all instead of my prospecting, or should I do yes. five? Yes, that is your prospect. That is prospect. That I, if if my opinion of it is, I would start. Yeah, that is your prospecting until you get through the whole list. Because here's why, especially for where I know you're at, if you call through every person you know, you are going to generate at least one deal, probably more. Just by calling through those people, you're going to have some that go, hey, actually, yeah, we are thinking about doing something. 
So 100%, I would say that should be your prospecting. Then once you've compiled it and gotten it to the 200 with permission, then that's where, to me, this is where I'm doing 10 a day from here and 20 from some other source. Got a question. So when you're actually get, gathering the contacts, um, like for example, my SOI, I mostly just have phone numbers. What is the most key information you're getting from them? Phone number and email address. And, and home address if yeah I mean I would say a home address as well if they own it if they own a house if they own one mm -hmm. that way you can send them the emails that way yep are you able to do it you know if you just know like the areas address. that they're in or like do you have to have a specific address so on the with zap the home value updates you put in their home address and then it pulls from the area from the third one thing that I've found is that if you have a name and phone number and they do own a house, just like on their address. Yeah, yeah you can look at your local, check the tax ID. Yeah. yeah. Did somebody back there have a question? Backwards. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, like, how much time do you advise for someone that's also doing, like, let's say, um, also prospecting, right, on like leads, this and that, like, to concentrate on? Oh, yep. so i that's just take time to work in 10 a day for this and then the other 20 or however many whatever your number of contacts would be from your yeah, online until you hit like 200 say that again until you hit like those 200 yeah so yeah, yeah until you hit the 200, 200 if you're at if you're at 100 then you're going to be calling five a day until you, you know uh, and slowly yeah. increasing that's nothing i feel like 30 calls a day like oh, that's like yeah okay like 30 calls but so for some people to get even some market update, you, you recommend to do that like every two weeks? Or so if the way that Zap works on it, I, I wish we could do it monthly. And actually, when we roll into Moxie Works, we're going to be able to do that. But this one right now on home value updates, it does it weekly, but it'll only send them email if there's something that's changed. So I found like I have myself set up on it. I get an email every two to three weeks. It's kind of which... I still feel like it's probably a little too much. So I'll be glad once we have Moxie and we can do the once a month. Mike, did you have another question? Um, I did actually. Um, so with the the red and green, is there like something that you can implement for like your lead follow-ups where you're like three strikes and you're not a lead anymore? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, for me, that's what it and just making notes, just wherever you keep your notes, just just do it. And you the other thing you could do is it, in Zap is create a tag. That that sometimes what I would say is if I had somebody I was iffy, I might put a tag on them and put yellow or something, kind of like they're not red. I'm not sure they're green, but they're not quite red yet. So I would say yellow or something. So they get like three yellows and they get a red. And then you, yeah, that's how. It and then you're right. If you have things in Zap, will it automatically transfer over or easy to transfer? So they're saying yes as of right now. They're saying yes, but worst case, we would do an export to a CSV and import back in. Pretty simple. But there, the last call I was on, they said that it will import right into Moxie Works, whatever you have in the Zap. So. Is it going to be Zap anymore? Or is it all just called Moxie Works now? So Zap will still be in play till the end of this year, is what they're saying. Then it'll just be Moxie Works. Okay. Um, so with people on my social media, a lot of them, I probably would almost feel like we were having, like getting their number and then calling them. So would I just have that conversation with them around uh -huh. that social media platform? Yep. Yep. Start it to get the permission from there. Then once they give you permission, then I would say, can I get your email address and that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. If they're following your stories, if they're paying attention, they care. Yep. That's a great, I think that's an easy place to start with social. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Uh, I guess I'm just look fast. You <laughs> see that a lot of people like they walk out of here with a bill. Where you usually see the biggest bills that come from and try to sustain the order. Like, right? It's easy to not watch that first six months go by. So that I was going to say, where I think that it's right here, because they're scared to go call and ask for permission. I was going to say. Which, but if you are, here's the thing. If you pulled out your phone and let me just, I'll just do it here. Let's just say I went into my contacts. And I'm just going to do a random scroll down here for, like, and I go, okay, this person, Daniel Rojas. If I look at it and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I dare to call him. Don't. Yeah, that he's read. Just take it. Um, don't put like that's that's how to do this. Is just go through your contacts and go. Yeah, I don't feel like calling that person. No, no. And let's say I only come up with twenty. Great. Then that what that means is I got to go door knock 
or go down the phone and make phone calls to get the other 180. Like, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Here my friends are ill. It's like, I called a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I called a buddy, and he's like, man, these must be hard. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, really? I'm like, we've done several transactions. Oh, really? I'm just asking. I'm just checking in, man. We just... Uh, yeah, that was like that's what makes my calls hard. They are they're assholes. So. Well, then you need some new friends. <laughs> Don't make sense. Yeah, does, does yeah, well, yeah, and that's yeah. so that's just it. If, if you're getting business from them, like I would put them in, there. and and maybe you don't. Maybe with that's just it. Is keep in mind, like use some. And I don't mean this, I'm not saying this for you, but just like use some common sense of like if they're doing business with you and they don't want you to call them, I would still put them in there and just never call like monthly i would get to it and be like okay should i call him and just check in even if it's still like the market update it's still like yeah exactly but but and maybe with him maybe it is you don't ask for business you just do the hey how's it going just haven't talked to you want to see how things are going like to some extent if i've got somebody who's giving me business i'm and they're going to be like that i'll just i won't call and say do you could you have any business can you send it to me just call him and just say, hey, how are you doing? He's not sending me referrals, but if he does anything business, he does. He does. Okay. So maybe you find a really whopping good deal if there is one, like a little condo, and say, hey, this great condo just came on. Do you know anybody? Yeah, you could do that too. That want to invest? Because I'm thinking about this. Yeah. And I'm reaching out like and see. Yeah, that would work too. Weird like that. Yeah, I like that. And then send it to him. Awesome. Send him the listing. You're the best.